we are only as strong as our partnerships. From day one of my tenure as special representative, I have made the survivor-centered approach my top priority. After centuries of suppression and forced silence and misplaced stigma, we must navigate a way forward that is guided by the grand truths of survivors as our moral compass. The misconception that survivors are vulnerable. I come from an organization where um, a freedom from torture, I used to be a service user, so I benefited from the service of that organization. And from there, when I finished therapy, I moved into the Survival Speak Out Network. So you, quite often, we see organization, I think the intention um, are, are quite well-funded, or being overprotective and not allowing survivor to engage in certain things or participate in certain things because in coma, survivor are too vulnerable. I think we have a duty of care to ensure that survivor participate and engage safely, but what we've seen is that that misconception has not really allowed survivor to be empowered. One way of looking at it is the people who are engaged, particularly at a very high diplomatic decision-making level, say, in any of the governments uh, in the foreign ministries, are often grappling with issues, like in places that all of you know, uh, that are places of severe conflict today, with a C CRSV component to them. And yet, in doing Ukraine or Myanmar or Sudan or whatever, that is not part of what they work on in finding the solutions to those conflicts. Uh, and we've got to find a way um, to more holistically uh, ensure that people who are in those very positions understand all of the tools and all of the challenges uh, that they have to address. All those experiences, I was six for the first war, nine for the second, 16 for the third. Before my mother passed, she told me that when I was six and my father was in the Navy and away from home, I said to her, if we are taken as prisoners of war, Ma, don't worry about me. They won't kill me because I know how to wash dishes <laughs> and I can serve as a servant in one of their households. I share this with you just to say that I watched how that trauma actually begets a cycle of hate and further lays the foundation for conflict. So just keep that in mind that ultimately to stop CRSV, we have to stop this vicious cycle. We have to stop it somehow. Thank you. Power is always a, an imbalanced thing. And so here's uh, a set of postcards from um, different points of view about power. To the center from the edge, this circle is marked out by the dredges of your justice, and at these edge place ruts, we eat the crusts of hope. Must this circle never end? Please, can we make a new shape, shaped a bit like you, and shaped like me, shaped like how we think that things might be if things were not the way they've been? And I know, I know, that's a dreamer's dream. But what if dreams like nightmares could be real? To the center from the edge, we're still here. If you drown out all our voices, you will not drown out your fear. We're still here.